Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papazoglakis, and I serve as rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Tuesday in the fourth week in Lent. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the seventh chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Did what is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, working death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. Here ends the lesson. Paul addresses another commonly held misunderstanding in his effort to clarify the relationship between sin and the law. He begins this argument by asking, did what is good then bring death to me? To which he immediately answers his own question, saying emphatically, by no means. It is not the law that brings death. However, sin uses the commandments of the law, which in and of themselves are a good thing, against their intended purpose, turning what is intended for good to death, as sin begets more sin. What is brought into existence as a holy, righteous, and good thing to lead people to the right choices, when abused, leads to the opposition of God and the corruption of individuals. The dynamic of the relationship between sin and the law shows itself through internal conflicts within a person and the ongoing internal battle that exists between being holy as God intended and the sin that dwells within. Paul used the example of his own struggle with the indwelling power of sin and its ever-present efforts to control his life, saying, I do not understand my own actions. I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. He is saying that a person's actions are subject to powers and influences that he did not understand and could not explain. Since Paul knows that the law is good, he concludes that it is the power of sin living within him that perpetuates the conflict between his desires and the sin that resides within him. In his inner being, he delights in God's law, and yet he simultaneously also saw another law or the principle of sin at work within him. Paul called this the sin that dwells within him, something I suspect we all know all too well. The point for all of us is to know and accept that we do not have the power to resist the draw of sin on our own. 
Our hope for salvation from sin and death is truly in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturday or 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.